so stunning. It's very, very pretty. This is the hardest thing that anyone can ever go through. And I've talked to some women and um, some of them would agree that this is kind of like a prolonged um, prolonged experience of childbirth. Because it's like there's, there's intense contractions and then there's a relief and a coming in and out in that sense. Sort of the personal story and then just the awe of everything. And then you come in and out. And sometimes before it actually just all dissolves back into everything, the, the so-called contraction can feel stronger than ever. It's not exactly how it is, but it's a rough just description. Because this is the most uncomfortable you could ever feel. The dropping of all hope, desire, dream of an imaginary future. Because we've all been so conditioned to hang on to that, to use it. And what that does is give you motivation drive, passion, direction, hope, faith. You see how a whole imagined, imagined dream emerges from that. Just that belief that there is a future something. So the total dropping of that is, whew, it's not an easy thing by any means. During this, all of the uncomfortable things are free to emerge, like loneliness, despair, sense of not belonging, sense of failure, sense of not good enough, all these insecurities, like they can come up bit by bit or explosively chaotically and I remember during this time I kept saying to myself that this was it this too was it unraveling the story that's arising right now this is it this sensation is it let it burn let it be here and there was still squirming and fighting because the body's not used to doing that And it's also coupled with this choiceless surrender over and over. 
So there's some help in that, I guess. You know? There's this weird interplay between just life taking over and glimmers of the sense of control, of free will that come in and out. And old narratives that come in and out. And it's not to be shied away from. That is it. When you hear the description of the absolute purity of this, it could seem like that's not it. But because the body is patterned and programmed a certain way, it's likely that it will come, ov- come up over and over. And it's not a bad thing. It is innocently arising that way. You are actually not making it happen. So how can that not be it? If it's there, it's just there. It's there to be looked at, seen in this vast, spacious, ever-present, unconditional love. You were never separate from this. You never existed the way that you feel and believe. Maybe at one point you felt and believed that you were a solid separate being, but that is not true. You were never separate from life. You were never in relation to life. Life was actually experiencing you. And even that sounds a bit relatable, but it's not. How I mean it is not how I say it. Because, you know, from a so-called positional perspective, a personal perspective, there is an experience unfolding. And so that's why I say you're not experiencing life. Life is experiencing you. But when that sense of experiencing central ownership and experiencing everything dissolves, it's it's quite clear that life isn't really experiencing you or itself it's just all life and it's so hard to differentiate and say what is what what's experiencing what like the subject object this all doesn't make sense anymore and it's all just pure Pure life. You are absolute love itself. I know it may not feel like that sometimes. But everything that's arising in the body is pure love itself. Unconditional. And it's crazy because it's like life is just like... You don't have to believe it. You could still experience separation and it still doesn't make it separate from anything. 
it still is so it still is wholeness never changing ever present always is So let it come, let the fear come, let the devastation come, let the unfairness be felt, let the hopelessness wash over, let the loneliness be here. These are all labels to unknown energy to undefinable sensation. To pure, vibrant emptiness. It cannot harm you. You're not experiencing any of that. Life is appearing that way. Endless, edgeless, borderless life. Coming from nowhere and everywhere. The need to be free just dissolves and then it's seen that there's just simplicity there's just what is and it's always been this way and you were always so perfect you know you were never there, but what you thought you were. Like all of it is so perfect, it's so innocent, it's so beautiful. There was never anything damaged about you. That sense of unworthiness is not you. It's understandable why it would be there, why it would be persistent. Because all of our lives we've been told that we're not good enough. So how can that not be energetically ingrained in the system? So it's innocent. If it comes, it's okay. It's not coming up to be shunned away again. All you're doing is suppressing it. And in a way, again, life is just looking at that as if it's okay. But because there's an understanding that the body is probably conditioned to suppress it to deny it again and again then there's a wanting to say that you don't have to do that it's okay if you do but you don't have to do that anymore there's nothing to be ashamed of nothing to be embarrassed about In fact, we were, you were always okay. It's just that because there was an ingrained belief that you weren't okay, because it was mirrored to you, it was shown to you innocently, 
then there was a sense of self on top of that like just meaning energetically I should be this way I should do this I should act this way and you know it's just energy that's suppressed over and over and then acted on top of and the body then can do weird stuff the body then can act in not so sane ways not such nice ways and I'm just giving a description of how harmful, so-called harmful behavior can emerge and gosh you know it's hard to say this so publicly but no one is doing that it's an accumulation of pain, conditioning, ways of being and a distorted expression that can sometimes really harm another a seeming other are so loved so so loved and again that doesn't make sense because in a way you just are love this unconditional beaming love that is what you are <laughs> not as a thing not as an entity not as a position positional experiencer not as an object but as everything <laughs> 